Hello, welcome to this video on dates in Data Studio. I'm going to be using the Data Studio documentation. I'm going to put a link to this down into the description. So there's a lot of uh, functions in here. I'm only going to go through a few of them. So if you are interested in any more day functions, you can get them all here. I have a data set, which is a bike trips data set. So let me go and put in a table here. Day field in this instance is the start time. I'm just going to stick that in here and I can see very quickly that this is a date time. So this contains both a date and a time. The beauty of these fields is that there's functions that you can use and we will be using some functions and I'm going to show you a couple of the functions later on. But there's a lot of stuff that's just automatically there for you. So if I go into this time here, so this is the dimension that's in here, which is called start time. If I go into this, I can go into type and I can go into date and time. What I can do here is I can pull out all the, the bits and pieces uh, automatically in Data Studio and just have them as separate columns. So it's a date time at the moment. I can just change this to a date and that's just the date without the time. We can go in here and we can say, oh, I just want the year for this column. And then you can see that the year will kind of aggregate up into these. It's really good for exploratory data analysis. So I'm actually going to leave that year there and I'm going to bring in start time again and just show you some other stuff that we can get from it. Going into this one, you can see all the different pieces. So we've got year, you've got year quarter and we've got week, month, year. This is quarter. So this isn't any specific year. This is quarter overall in the data set. So you can see that I have quarter two and quarter two here, if I was to take out this year, this would just be quarters on their own. So this isn't tied to any specific year automatically. That's if you want to go for a general, say you've got a couple of years in the data set, you want to look at like, what's the story for quarters overall. You can also see what's, uh, what's happening on a particular day of the week. And this is over the whole data set as well. So you can say, right, how many bike trips happened on what's my most popular day and all the way down. So it's, it's really useful, um, this functionality in here and this automatic functionality. And let's now go in and look at some fields. So we can add fields by just clicking on the add fields button. And this brings us down into a, a place where we can put in automatic functions to create a new field. So we've shown the extract automatically. I'll just show you how to extract things manually. So if I want the month in here, I would do a function and I would say extract and you can see the functions down here and it gives you a lot of nice uh, examples down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract month from my start time here by just going extract month from start time. And you can extract anything down there by doing that. An easier extraction is also you can extract kind of just the part from the date. So instead of doing even the extract function in here, you can just go a uh, month and you can put start time in here as well. So the extract is more going to the extract. You can probably have more functionality around it. But if you just say, I want to get a month, you just put a month start time here. You can save this and then you will have your month in here. So I can just put my month into here and it'll just have my month in there. So let's get a bit more technical now. I've got a start date and I want to get an end date. So I have my start, uh, I have my start time in here and the start time is a date time. So it will have like every bit of the, the start date. So we've got minutes and all that sort of stuff. I've got minutes of the duration of the trip in here. So if I just get rid of these two free sections, it gives a bit more room so we can see what's going on. I've got a start time here. I've got minutes. I want to add these two together and then come up with a new date. So we can do that by, again, adding a field in here. And we're just going to call this end time. And we can do this by uh, date time add. And this will just add an interval to a date time. So I have my start time here. And then I have to put interval. And then my interval field, which is duration minutes. And you can see these will come up with the, the fields will come up surrounded by green. So just watch out for that one. And then you have to put in the actual date part of the intervals. And now that's good. So 
it's a li- t- a tiny bit complicated just because we're not kind of um breaking everything with an apostrophe that this interval part is it's kind of three different components but all in the same uh all in the same kind of part of the function so you've got start time which is one parameter and this combined is the second parameter so you've got start time and then your interval is duration minutes and then the date part of that is minute it's going to save this as end time and to save this by end time and then we can just bring this in here and when this wants to load i have my start time plus 10 minutes equals this and you could do this there's a lot of different ways to do date date add and date difference um it's super useful for just deriving dates there is a another function we can use and we can say how long since a certain date and for this one we can use this end time so i want to see for each of these observations right how long is it since the person got off the bike so to do that we're going to add a field again and this is called date difference and um, so i will say time so you could just say time since in here and instead of daytime add this is a daytime diff so whatever you can do with a daytime you can do with a date it just like it just depends on what you want to deal with most times you'll be dealing with dates but if it's something like this example here we'll be dealing with date times because we want a specific on a day how many minutes something took and an end time and that sort of stuff so there is a function called current date time so that's right now and then what we can do is we are taking a date diff between the current date time and we have what time i want to take the difference from and i can take that from end time and then we've got a date part right what do we want to show this in weeks hours minutes uh, milliseconds so what i'm going to show it in hours so i'm just going to take an hour as my an hour as my day part part here and i'll show you you can take it really as any part you want so i'm going to save that and i'm going to put that into my function in here so this is how many hours since that specific day time from right now time since going to that fx there and we can say right i want months since that date update this so 92 months right now since that date and you can do any date part you want so it's very very flexible in anything you want to do for dates so just to wrap up i'm just going to go to the functions list here and we can see some of the functions some of them we've we've talked about some of them we haven't so we've got current date current date time we've looked at this one current date same idea we've got a date so this can construct a date so say if you've got a year month day function and you want to turn it into a date you can do it this way and then you can parse as well down below we looked at date diff day time is just a construction of a date time is year month day hour minute second look to both of these date time subtract subtract is just subtracting something from that and it, well all these are just the extract extractors as well so we're extracting the day from the date we can do that with extract day from date as well there is and these most of these are just obviously the extractors again so the year year of week month of week quarter and then this is what this is how to parse a date and this is how to parse a date time. So I hope you found this video useful. Very, very good system to deal with dates, to be honest, especially those extractors. And I find the functions quite easy as well. So any questions, ask down below, and I'll see you very soon for another Data Studio tutorial.